do I have a flex for you guys tonight? So here I have my Raspberry Pi Zero 2, and you might be thinking, why the fuck do you have a heatsink on it? The last time I had this on the channel, it was all horribly wired into a breadboard with some LEDs. Well, you see, on this little chad right here, I have a full arch install with Wayland. And uh, also it doesn't help that I, uh, I overclocked the CPU from the uh, base 1 gigahertz up to uh, 1.4 gigahertz. But uh, we we're looking at is the Raspberry Pi a viable arch box? So um, it does run a bit hot. Uh, that's uh, that's why I got this heat sink. You can uh, see the copper plate right there. It's pretty cheap. It's like five bucks off of Amazon. But um, yeah, I've been uh, I've had this for a couple days now, and I've been uh, I've been using it. I've uh, I've even done some developing on it. And overall, I'd say uh, it's been a I'm I'm impressed. It's been a nice experience, especially from uh, something half the size of a credit card. But uh, here I have my uh, my little portable monitor from Asus, and then I have my Bluetooth keyboard from NuFi with the uh, the Gateron Browns, the NuFi Air seventy five. So as far as install, it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a lot like installing Arch on your uh, normal PC. I'd actually say it's a lot easier. Um, you just go to uh, so. Arm, Arch doesn't uh, officially support ARM, uh, Arch is x86 only, but there is a uh, side project called Arch Linux ARM, which is like the official, unofficial Arch ARM implementation. So you just uh, plug this uh, boy into a laptop, and then just like regular Arch, you partition it into boot and root, and then you make your file systems, as always, uh, FAT32 for the boot, ext4 for the root uh, and then you just unpack the uh, kernel and all the other little binaries into the root move your boot files into your uh, boot partition and then you uh, have a full arch linux install so to boot this up you'll just uh, pop in your uh, sd card that's a little hard since i got my uh, phone in my one hand and then You'll grab uh first cable you'll need is the big old fat HDMI cable. Uh, many HDMI is still big as fuck. Uh, let's see if I can get that in. Ah, uh, there we go. It's a lot easier with the heatsink on since there's something to grab. And then since HDMI is only uh, input only, it doesn't deliver power. You'll need a uh, cable for the power. But, um, and this doesn't have to be, uh, let's see, right there, this, this doesn't have to be from the Pi itself if you want to keep this, uh, USB port free. But, um, I'm just doing it for simplicity. You can, you can use an external power source if you want. And then to turn, to act, actually, uh, boot up the Pi, only manage my cable a bit better, uh, to actually boot up the Pi. You just need to deliver power into this one. So here I have a uh, mini HDMI cable, micro H, sorry, micro USB cable plugged into my laptop as a power source. So once we plug this in, uh, let's see. All right, there we go. It's in, and then as you see, it boots up, and uh. That looks a lot like Linux to me. Uh, yeah, there's a little pie thing. Uh, welcome to Arch Linux. All right, here we have Sway, my uh, window manager, and um, this is the uh, this is the same config file for my laptop. The only difference is um, I'm using foot for my terminal instead of kitty. And uh, I also uh, let the record set that is not 421. Uh, for some reason, my uh, clock's fucked up. I don't think the hardware clock works on the Raspberry Pi. But, uh, yeah, quite a few things don't work. So, uh, I'm using a uh, foot for my terminal instead of kitty. Since, uh, even though Raspberry Pi claims that the board supports OpenGL, uh, it just doesn't work. And, um, also Vulkan doesn't work. So, the only way to, like, run, like, those kind of things is to run the software implementation of OpenGL, which fucking sucks. I blame the Broadcom GPU. Uh, that's that's the root of all 
all problems. But uh, yeah, foot foot runs fine. Um, let's uh, let's pop up, up a uh, terminal window. Uh, let's get a couple up. Um, yeah, let's do the classic split. And uh, what should we run? Let's run let's run an H top just because it looks cool. And as always, we have to uh, run a Neo fetch. So uh, yeah, I am. Uh, you can see here I'm running the uh, 32 bit version. I just uh. I feel like the 32-bit kernel runs a bit better, and uh, yeah, uh, the quad-core Broadcom CPU right here at 1.4 gigahertz. My uh, recording software is absolutely eating up my half gig of RAM. Uh, let's uh, let's look at the temperature. Uh, measure temp. Yeah, a uh, a nice warm 40. 7.8 degrees Celsius, which is I think like 120 Fahrenheit or something. Uh, it's pretty warm, but um, I'd say the heat sink is managing it well. If we uh, let's uh, run some uh, programs. The uh, Wayland client I wrote wrote back a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, let's see, let's pop that up. Oh, you can definitely feel that lag. Yeah, it's uh it runs fine. Um hopefully I don't eat up all my memory doing this. But yeah, um it it is a lot smoother without the recording software. But um yeah, inputs work as you can see. So um yeah, uh I'd say I've been using this for a couple of days now and I'd say it uh it runs pretty well, especially with the heat sink. The um the system is very manageable and if you're used to just like terminal applications like Vim and HTOP and stuff like that, like honestly, the Pi is pretty nice. Like, you don't like. I haven't tried running Firefox. I don't intend to. Uh, if you're if you have like maybe a Raspberry Pi four with like four eight gigs, maybe like yeah that it should run fine. But like this is just such a small system. I'm not trying to push it, but just for like my development needs it uh it runs pretty nice so let's um let's uh let's take a look at something else so let's uh write a uh let's write some assembly so the fun thing about this is unlike a regular pc this is uh this is an x86 this is an arm system which is very convenient since i've uh I've done some ARM assembly on this channel. So last video, I wrote a little uh, assembly program that just printed a dollar sign. And that was on my uh, laptop, which is an x86 system. But this is an ARM system. So uh, let's play around with that. So first we're going to... Um, let's, uh, let's see. Let's move Word... And into R0, let's put uh, 2596, which is just a dollar sign, a new line character shifted over 8 plus a dollar sign in ASCII 2. And then let's go, um, let's see. I think it's, yeah, we move, I believe it's z 0 into R7. I believe that's the right, um, either write or read. No, it's uh, 4. Yeah, it's 4. Uh, exit is 0, which I think makes more sense than 60 on uh, the normal x86 this call. Um, and then instead of RDI, we move the file descriptor into R0. So we move... Oh, first I need to pop this on the stack and push it on the stack. So yeah, RAX is R7. RDI is R0, so we're going to give it 1 as our file descriptor, which is standard out. And then we move uh, the stack pointer into R1, since that's where our uh, ASCII 2 is going to be, our string. And then we'll move, um, we'll give it 2 bytes into R2. And then instead of syscall, we just do SVC 0. And then to exit, um, we move... 0 into R7, and then we move our exit code 0 into R0. 
and that is our uh, little assembly program. So if we write this and then let's go uh, to let's assemble this. So AU and this is an ARM32 system. And then let's see. So now if we load this into memory with the uh, program I wrote last video, uh, we give it our binary and then also our stack size. So it will just take eight. And there we have our dollar symbol. So um, yeah, and there's, there's our processor ID. So if we take a look at this, uh, bin hex, a.bin, a.hex, and then pop that open. Uh, the main difference between ARM assembly and x86, besides that they're completely different architectures, is that ARM is what's known as a uh, reduced instruction set uh, in contrast to x86, which is a complex instruction set. And all that means is that ARM instructions are always, uh, they're all the same size. They're four bytes long. So here we have our move instruction followed by push and then move r7 move r0 move r1 move r2 syscall move r7 move r0 syscall so this is our arm which got um, loaded directly into memory so yeah uh i th i just thought that was pretty cool that um different architectures but same exact principles so Overall, um, this is a. Uh, I've enjoyed using the Pi. Um, I think it'd be an interesting experiment to kind of use this as a daily driver for an extended period of time. But this is a very viable option, especially for uh, just standard development um, applications. So yeah, uh, if you have a Raspberry Pi, go uh, go check out Arch Arm Linux. I'll uh, put the link in the description. And uh, yeah. And if you want to overclock it, make sure to uh, get a heatsink since this little chip does uh, it does get pretty hot. But other than that, Bluetooth works great, Wi-Fi works great. Um, if the recording software wasn't uh fucking eating up all, all my RAM, like this uh, it runs pretty smoothly. Like you don't even realize how limiting the software is. But yeah, um, go have fun with it.